Hello, my name is Amy Kelly, and I am the director of the West Virginia Behavior and Mental Health Technical Assistance Center. We are located at the West Virginia Autism Training Center at Marshall University. We are a collaboration between the West Virginia Department of Education, Office of Special Education and Student Support, and the West Virginia Autism Training Center. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to talk with you about self-care. Why you should practice self-care every day, and more importantly, how. I challenge you to accept that occasionally you should put your needs first, and this is how you begin. Let's start with what is self-care? Self-care is a topic that has gained a lot of attention and is becoming more mainstreamed. Taking care of ourselves and making a deliberate effort to prioritize our well-being is not only necessary for our health, but it creates better friends, co-workers, parents, spouses, and partners. However, a lack of self-care could create a downward spiral. You are likely to feel stressed out or overwhelmed when you're not caring for yourself, which makes it tougher to be an empathetic and patient parent. In turn, you might feel guilty and overwhelmed. Self-care may be the last thing on your mind, but prioritizing yourself first is something that you may have a hard time doing because it can feel selfish. You aren't selfish for putting yourself first. Self-care is not a luxury, it is a priority. It's not selfish to love yourself, it is necessary. So why should you put yourself first? Because you deserve it. You deserve to occasionally put yourself first. It not only helps you to feel better, it can replenish you, boost your energy, and give you clarity. During stressful periods, which for some could be our day-to-day -day life, for others, more severe times. For example, experiencing a sudden death or loss of a loved one, a divorce, or a natural disaster. Caring for yourself should not take back seat, but should be a priority. When you are at your best, you can make better decisions and support the ones that are around you. In order to be your best, you must be strong mentally, physically, and spiritually. Caring for your mental health can simply be valuing yourself and everything that you do for others. Treating yourself with kindness and trusting that you are doing your very best. You can also care for your mental health by surrounding yourself with positive people that care about your well-being. A bigger challenge would be to learn how you deal with stress. We are all going to encounter stress, but how you deal with it will have an impact on your mental health. Also, creating and setting boundaries. The best way to set boundaries is to know exactly what your limits are emotionally and physically. Caring for yourself physically does not have to start with a membership at a local gym or rec center. You can make small realistic changes to your physical activity. For example, walking your dog or parking further away from your office than what you normally would um, or taking the stairs versus the escalator. You can also make realistic changes to your diet. Don't start with completely eliminating snacks um, that you love to eat, but limiting the, the amount and how often you may eat those favorite snacks. Uh, practicing good hygiene. Taking a warm bath can reduce inflammation. 
Um, it can help you sleep better and it also um, can soothe sore. Caring for yourself spiritually. Spiritual care is taking action to deepen your connection with your higher self or, or who you truly are. Uh, it is any ritual or practice you do to further your connection with your higher self. Uh, practicing spir spiritual care can not only lead to um, a greater inner peace, but it can help you live uh, in greater alignment with your core values. So a few ways that you could practice spiritual self-care are meditation or yoga, uh, going for a walk in nature, which taps into all five of our senses, um, cleaning and organizing your um, daily living space and connecting with your community. Um, some other fun ways for you um, to practice self-care um, are simple things like joining a book club. Um, a book club can serve several purposes. Um, it can provide social interaction. It can motivate you um, to schedule time to read and it can help you to have something to look forward to. If you are not familiar with a local book club, um, I encourage you to reach out to your library. They may host book clubs themselves or may be able to put you in contact with someone within the community that is hosting a book club. Um, another idea would be to write in a a gratitude journal. There are tons of studies out there to show how um, journaling um, can have positive effects on your um, overall well-being. But some specific things are um, it can help you to sleep longer um, and experience higher quality of sleep. Uh, the best part is that writing in the journal, it only takes a few minutes of your time and it really doesn't cost anything. Um, so before you go to sleep, just jot down two or three things that you are thankful for. It can be simple things like the weather um, or it could be maybe a goal that you've been working on you have finally reached that goal. So either way simply reminding yourself of things that you have to be grateful for can have a positive impact on your life. Um, and one final um, idea would be to take a break from electronics Scrolling through social media, the internet, and binge watching TV uh, may seem like a good way to relax, uh, but on the contrary, those activities can sometimes cause more stress um, than you would maybe realize. But uh, any type of digital device can create a lot of pressure for you to be on. So to either respond to that email from work or from um, a social media message, uh, anything that you do right before bed, um, you know, your electronic habits might be taking a bigger toll on your life than, again, what you would possibly realize. So a digital detox may not only be um, good for you and help you to reset some habits, but could also be good for your kids. And so speaking of kiddos, a few ideas for self-care activities that you can do and include your kids are to have a dance party. Don't be afraid to be silly. Uh, go for a bike ride, paint, draw, or craft, and, and don't, don't stress out about being a perfectionist. Listening to um, a podcast or music, writing together, no particular subject, just write and see what comes out or uh, call or FaceTime other family members or friends. So in closing, I know I've given you many examples of how to practice self-care, but I want to remind you just to not neglect the most basic components of self-care, which are doing your best to eat um, a healthy diet, um, doing your best to get seven to eight hours of sleep, um, sleep a night, and to have a regular exercise. Um, and also just keep in mind that times when you are thinking you don't really have time to care for yourself um, is probably when you need it the most. For more resources and information, please go to www.wvde.us slash COVID-19.